स्थापकाय धर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू द स्टडी ऑफ द साइंस ऑफ वर्शिप और द सिग्निफिकेंस बिहाइंड ऑल द मुद्रास द मंत्रास एंड द रिचुअल्स ऑफ वर्शिप वी वे डिस्कसिंग द विशेषार्ग्य स्थापना एंड इट्स सिग्निफिकेंस इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैड कंप्लीटेड ऑलमोस्ट नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ वाई ऑल द थिंग्स आर डन द मुद्रास द स्पेशलिटी वी विल कंटिन्यू टूडे with that uh, taking up the trail of the last discussion of the visheshakya so as we all know why is visheshakya dhyan what is the significance so in the samanya arkya that is the simple or a general arkya this is vishesha special the divine presence has to be invoked in every object used in the worship and the place where we worship everything we have to invoke the divine presence so so that the worshiper perceives no distinction between these objects and the deity worshiped with them this we have done in a general way by consecrating the samanya arkya and also all other process in the puja was done because of that in a general way we did it and sprinkling sprinkling of all the articles with the consecrated water so now the divine presence in particular form there it was done in a general form now we have the same consciousness we have made it to take the form of the deity which we are going to worship because now it is shri ramakrishna puja if you are doing the puja of shiva then the consciousness will be taking the form of shiva if you are doing narayana puja it will take the form of narayana or vishnu if you take up durga puja saraswati puja lakshmi puja subramanya puja ganesh puja whatever deity rama or krishna consciousness will take that particular form so that's why in this visheshargya since we are doing ramakrishna puja the consciousness will take that particular form special form of ramakrishna so whichever deity we are going to worship that form that special form will be taken so that is the idea of the whole of visheshakya now here because we have taken shri ramakrishna worship of ramakrishna devata divine presence in the particular form of ishta devata shri ramakrishna in which we are worshiping and with which we are identifying all objects in being invoked through the consecration of the visheshargya so then we also gave you the examples of why we are worshiping the aadhar shakti what is the aadhar shakti what is the triangle so the triangle indicates the energy the fire the muladhara so then the circle around it was indicated by the water then the square is the earth so aadhar shakti then above that is the next is we kept that tripod on the aadhar shakti to hold the shankar that is we worshiped as mam vanni mandalaya fire mam vanni mandalaya with the bija mantra then arka mandalaya sun's bija mantra then soma mandalaya the next above that the conch was the was representing the arka mandala that is sun then we invoked the next thing in the soma mandala so that is the cool and soothing light of the lunar or with which lord's presence is invoked so then we had the teertha invoked there 
Tirtha is the fault. I explained everything in the last class. Holy rivers, water like Ganga, Yamuna, Godavari, Saraswati, Narmade, Sindhu, Kaveri, which can be the most sacred and worthy seat for the invocation of the Lord. There I explained as it is a fault to help you to cross this Samsara Sagara. So then above that is the Supreme Lord, Ishwara, the Creator. Now we have taken the form of Ramakrishna. So diagrammatically this is the way which we are thinking of this Visheshargya. So this can also be represented by another way. This is at the cosmic level. This is the Brahmanda. Then there is another thing called Pindanda. There is a macrocosm, there is a microcosm level. We shall represent this in a beautiful way. And what is that? The triangle there in the Adhar Shakti is representing our Muladhar Chakra. Then after that is the circle that is representing the next chakra after the Muladhara Swadhishtana. Then the square around it is representing the Manipura. So these are the Adhara. Our consciousness or Kundalini with very little energy awakened, it will be moving only these three things. It doesn't go up. In the ordinary worldly life we lead everything. You are leading the life, having the children, having the samsara, enjoying this world, all the greatest achievements which you have done. With the Kundalini power, the power of the Divine Mother Nature, only working in these three planes, Adhar Shakti. That is Manipura. Sorry, no, Manipura is the above that. So the Muladhara, Swadhisthana, Manipura within this. So that is indicated by the Adhara Shakti, triangle, circle and square. Above that, now we have kept the tripod where we worshipped in the form of Omete Gandhapushpe, Mam, Vanni Mandalaya, Tashkalatme Nama. Vanni means fire, Vanni Mandala. So what is it representing here? The next chakra. So what is the this thing worshipped there above that? It is worshipped as Omete Gatapushpe Mam Vanni Mandalaya Dashakalatmane Namah Then Dvadashakalatmane Namah Then Shodashakalatmane Namah so here Dashakalatma, if you go to Manipur Chakra, the Manipur Chakra, the petal of the lotus is 10. Omete Gandhapushpe Mam Vanni Mandalaya Dashakalatma Ne Namaha Dashakalatma. So 10 petal also in the, at this microcosm level, the, ch the chakra or the petal is 10. Mam is the Bija Mantra there. Now go to the next, this thing we had dealt about all these chakras while we were doing the Bhuta Shuddhi. If you go back to Bhuta Shuddhi and find out all this chakra and the petals, everything we had told. So next above that is the next mandala, that is the Arka mandala, that is the conch. Then what was the mantra we told? Om Ete Gandhapushpe. Am Arka mandalaya Dvadashakalatmanena. Now after Manipura is the heart lotus, Anahata. So Dvadasha, sorry not Dvadasha, yeah. Dvadasha, 12 petal. So the 12 petal lotus at the heart. So you are raising your mind from the basic centers above the Muladhara to the Anahata. So now from the Anahata, you are raising your consciousness, a plane of consciousness, level of the mind to the next Vishuddha Chakra. And that is represented here by the Soma Mandala. And what is that mantra we told Om Ete Gandhapushpe Om Soma Mandalaya Dva uh, Shoda Shakalatma Mam Vanni Mandalaya Dashkalatma Nenamaha Am Marka Mandalaya Dva Dashkalatma Nenamaha Om Soma Mandalaya uh, Om Soma Mandalaya Shoda Shakalatma Nenamaha Shoda Shah Shoda Shah means 16 So the petal, the lotus which is there in the Vishuddha Chakra is having 16 petals You can go back and see So the Bija Mantra is Om so now the next is Agna Chakra and the Sahasrara. So that is the place of Ishvara, Sahasrara. 
So from the Agna Chakra to the this thing. So we are raising, creating the whole. So by this Visheshargya, we are creating our own, the Jivas, the whole Chakra, our own being. We are creating ourselves there in a general way we had created there. Now in a special way we have created the whole myself. So I will be bringing out the thing, everything I have created there. Now I am taking water that and worshipping all the things there in the Samanyarka I am taking. So it is the Sahasrara, that Amrita which is there within me I am taking out and worship everything. So consciousness is there within. The Lord is present within, I am bringing out and they are taking the form of Ramakrishna or whatever deity they are to be worshipped and I am worshipping him and again I am taking it back. So it will be showing it is just consciousness, it is the Lord and Lord everywhere. So that is the idea of puja you can see. You are, take, you are being slowly taken to that expansive formless worship from the form. Taking the form, then you do the worship and again take to the formless. So gradually you are lifting your consciousness. So the whole yourself, the whole self has been created in a special way. So in that Visheshartya you can see your heart lotus, you are then the Vishud, up to the Vishuddha Chakra. Then we keep that Argya on that. Argya is representing the Agna Chakra with the Bilva. Then the flower is the Chitta, your mind. Then the flower and everything it is up to the whole creation your mind total total mind is created with the tarkya what is the representation of giving the argya i have told in the beginning when we give the tarkya the bilupatra and the gandha representing the devotion the emotion of our heart then we are told the akshata is the atma swarupa or akshata no destruction kshaya no kshaya akshaya that is the paramatma swarupa the flower representing the the different aspects of our mind, the qualities of our mind. So it is the chitta of the that uh, stuff, mind stuff, chitta. So the whole thing represents our mind with all that ego, intelligence, the dharga that we offer to the Lord there. So we are creating the whole from the muladhara up to the sahasrara at the microcosm and at the macrocosm also you could see that before the explanation was given so now we will go to the next aspect of what is being there what is the significance in doing all those mantras so after this concept of Visheshargya at the microcosm and the macrocosm level We will take some water from the conch where we have invo invoked Ramakrishna through that mantra Shri Ramakrishna Deva Yahagachi Hagachi Hathishtai Hathishta or whatever deity we are invoking. Then the presence of the Lord is felt in that Tirtha. So we take through the small kushi without lifting the conch. We tilt it and pour a little then telling that Mula Mantra then we do the Prokshana sprinkle everything out that water now you, we put it to the Samanyargya then from Samanyargya we sprinkle it on all the articles of worship and ourselves by telling the Mantra Omaim Sarvadev Devi Surupai Shri Ramakrishna Namaha then we put it on the Baneshwara Shivalinga or Yantra which we are going to worship so that has also taken the form of now that is there also you are feeling the presence of Sri Ramakrishna. Then we are trying to realize the presence of the deity in the Visheshargya by repeating the mantra and showing the mudras, different mudras. So we showed the different mudras to show to feel the presence of the deity and then the atmosphere is purified by why do we clap that hand at three places you saw that we did that clapping like this at three different places we clapped like this 
above that shankha so why do we why do we do that that is done to to the atmosphere is purified by clapping hand and uttering phat 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 three times and further by the dhenu mudra the lord's presence is felt to immortalize everything to make it amriti karana amrita is immortalize everything so consciousness that which doesn't die is no death to die it's always living so that's called amrita immortal nectarin to make it nectarin amriti karana by showing next we showed the after this dhenu mudra we explained about dhenu mudra then after that dhenu mudra we showed the yoni mudra what is the significance of showing the yoni mudra so showing the yoni mudra the mind is taken to the feet of the lord the creator now ramakrishna he has taken the creator or ishvara or the consciousness has taken the form of shri ramakrishna now so we are taking by yoni mudra we are taking our mind to the f- fact the mind is taken to the fact that he shri ramakrishna is the source so yoni means source vishva yoni so by yoni mudra we are taking to the fact the mind is taken to the fact that the source vishva yoni universal cause of everything including the worshipper then so you came to know why we show the yoni mudra we are going to the next mudra that is paramikarana mudra so what are we showing in that param next mudra is paramikarana mudra so by that paramikarana mudra by showing that paramikarana implies that he is supreme and there is nothing higher than him so this complete the process of invocation so by showing paramikarana so what are we telling our mind bringing the fact to our mind so it implies that the lord whom we have invoked here in the form of ramakrishna or ganesh or whatever deity you are ishta devata now we are you have invoked ramakrishna is the supreme and there is nothing higher than this so this completes the process of invocation and visheshakya so this is this completes the significance of what is visheshakya after that we sprinkle the water on the worshipper and all the objects used in the worshipper worship is to intensify the feeling of identity of everything with the lord or your deity in the particular form of your ishta devata that is sarvam ramakrishnamayam jagat here we are worshiping ramakrishna so we are sprinkling that water of visheshakya on all the object of worship and worship and yourself what are we doing that the sprinkling of the water from the visheshakya on the worshipper and all the objects of worship used in the worship is to intensify the feeling of identity of everything with the lord in the particular form of ishta devata sarvam ramakrishnamayam jagat so in the beginning we have told that what is the goal of worship devo bhutva devam ejet first you have to become that particular deity before you have to worship that deity so now you have become ramakrishna through the bhut shuddhi you have through this visheshakya sprinkling the water again you have identified yourself you have become ramakrishna the articles is made ramakrishna now so now you are going to bring out that ramakrishna which is in your heart to the yantra the baneshwara linga the lord ramakrishna or deity or whichever you are going to worship will come there and you will worship first you have become ramakrishna devam bhutva after becoming the deity then we are worship see you can see so much of advaita so much of vedanta so much of high significance is there behind this worship so now we have finished this visheshakya after this visheshakya we will go to the next step we had i had already told about that uh what is that we did was pita devata puja om dhri mete gandha pushpe pita devata pyonamaha over the yantra yantra is if you are 
whatever you are invoking the deity from your heart now ramakrishna will be invoked into that yantra or baneshwar linga or shalagrama so we will call that now yantra now baneshwar linga we generally in ramakrishna ashma we use the baneshwar linga if you don't have baneshwar linga if you have shalagrama you can use that if you don't have shalagrama and baneshwar linga you can use some other yantra image of the deity or anything so we will now call it as yantra over that yantra worship with the following mantras because you are making that seat it is a seat in which you are going to worship the lord whomever you are going to invoke now so that seat is worshiped om hrim ete gandha pushpe pita devata abhyo namaha om hrim ete gandha pushpe pita shakti bhyo namaha so we have completed that i told about the significance also last time now the next step after pita puja is oh i have taught you also about the pronunciation so i need not again go to the pronunciation i have repeated it i will repeat it again om reem if you are telling it separately then you have to tell it reem it ends there hm hm kara reem or reem otherwise when you are telling with the other words to ete e so that ete is the swara so you can either if it it was a vyanjana then that varga anunasika has to be stressed now it is either hrim or hrim om hrim ete gandha pushpe pitha devatabhyo namaha om hrim ete gandha pushpe pitha shaktibhyo namaha so now we will go to the next step after the pitha puja so we had already done karanyasa and anganyasa here before we start the actual worship now the dashopchar puja is going to stop start start now so before that again we have to do karanyasa consecration of the hands and anganyasa consecration of the limbs and again meditation to dhyanam so punaha karanyasa punaha means again punaha anganyasa again we have to do anganyasa consecration of the limbs then punaha dhyanam again we have to do that that dhyanam was the for the mental worship manasa puja now it is the actual worship so punaha karanyasa so now that is punaha karanyasa you had earlier known about while we are doing the karanyasa we are doing the mantra of the mula mantra of shri ramakrishna because the deity is ramakrishna if the deity changes then the mantras also will change positivity sharda devi then the mantra bija mantra here will become ram hrim rum hrim ram ra so if it is durga it will be something different then if it is kali it will be different if it is krishna it will be different klam klim klum klim klam kla so bija mantra will change ganesha it will be gam so gam gim gum gaim gaum gam ga so like that it goes on changing the bija mantra here consecration of the hands you are what do you call samali karana that dt is now made into the bija mantra and is being separated and established the consciousness broken up and established on your hands all the uh, palms so i am angushta bhyam namaha angushta you know the thumbs so you have to touch the four finger with the thumb like this both the hands so then you have to think that the dt or the consciousness is coming and being established there this is the way so with the four fingers you touch the thumb telling i am angushta bhyam namaha then the next bija mantra or the letter we have to place on the four finger is ram so the mantra is i am ramakrishna i am ramakrishnam so karatala prashta bhyam as i am ramakrishna that is what that the letter in that i am rama ram ma krishna so all that letter is broken up and is being placed here so if you read from the top the bija mantra only see you read that i am rama krishna i am so that is the thing which we are placing i am angushta bhyam namaha then ram tarjani bhyam swaha then tarjani means the four finger from the thumbs we are touching the four finger like this then mam madhyam abhyam ashat madhya means the middle finger mam madhyam abhyam ashat krim that krishna rama krishna krim anamika abhyam hum snam kanishta abhyam kanishta means little finger 
Krishnam Kanishtabhyam Bhushal. I am then the mantra, I am the same mantra is still told, I am Ramakrishna Karatala Prishtabhyam Karatala Prishta. Kara, so this is Karatala Karaprishta. Karatala Prishtabhyam Astraya Phat. This way you do. I will show you again. I am Angushtabhyam Namaha, Ram Tarjaribhyam Swaha. Mam Madhivabhyam Vashat, Kram Ananikabhyam Hum, Snam Kanishtabhyam Vashat. I am Ramakrishna, Karatala Prishtabhyam, Astraya, Phat. So, now Punaha, Karanyasaha is over. Consecration of the hands. Again, we have done that. We have done it earlier. I have told you in the details. Now, we are going to the next. Punaha, Anganyasaha. Anga means limbs, different parts of our body. So, we have to do again. So, it is called, because it is again we are doing it, performing it, it is called Punaha. Punaha, Anganyasaha, consecration of the limbs again. The same mantra, the whole mantra is broken up into pieces and is placed on all the different parts of the body. There, now it was the kara, the hands. Now we are doing it on the different parts, limbs of the body. So, how are we doing that? With the mudra, you can do that. I am Hridayayanam, heart. I am Hridayayanam, Ram Shirase Swaha, Mam Shikhaye Vishtu, with the thumb. So, with the three fingers, edge, we do it at the heart like this. It was told earlier, Ayin, Radhyayanamaha, in the two, tip of the two fingers, the head, Ram, Shirase, Swaha, then Mam, that mantra Mam, we are doing it on the Shikha, where we have the, Sanyas, since we will have taken out the Shikha, we don't have it. So, generally they put from the Sahasrara, downwards or sidewards or whatever, different traditions have that. So, the Shikha will be in the Sahasrara position. So, with this thumb, we keep that at the Sahasrara, on the edge of the uh, backbone coming up there, Sushumna canal, the topmost point. So, Mam Shikhaya Vashat, then Krim. So, the all the tips of the all the fingers like this join together, you crisscross like this, you touch the, the bone joint here, that's Kavacha. So, Krim Kavacha Yuhum. The two shoulders joint here. Krim Kavachayahum. Then Shnam Netra Traya. Three eyes. All of us have, we know that only two eyes. But the third eye is the eye of knowledge here where we keep that Sindhura or whatever the mark religious thing. This thing I am keeping the Gandha offered to Lord Ramakrishna. So that is the place of the third eye, Tagna Chakra. So, when you open up to the world of spirituality, you get a different eye, Upanayana, another eye. So, we have to touch it with the three fingers like this. With the ring finger, one eye, then with the four finger, one eye, and with the middle finger, the third eye. This is the way we have to do that. What, are, what is the mantra? Shnam Netra Traya Yavavshat. The three eyes touching that. Netra Traya. Traya means three. Netra means eyes. Shnam Netra Traya Yavavshat. Then again, I am Ramakrishna. That is what we have broken that. Let us, I am Ramakrishna and placed it on different limbs. So, I am Ramakrishna. Karatala Prishtabhyam Astraya. But this is the way. Okay. We have finished even. Punaha Anganya. So, I have told all that thing in the earlier because this is again we are doing it so we, we have done it quickly and we are going to the next thing okay that is punaha dhyanam we are going to meditate again so punaha dhyanam so while meditating you know that it is the kurma mudra the tortoise i have told about the tortoise mudra what is the significance of that so in i took the example of the bhagavad gita where krishna tells kurmunga niva sarvashaha so kurma is the tortoise which tucks away all its limbs inside its shell so when danger is there likewise when this indication of kurma mudra taking the flower in the kurma mudra and keeping it the chest is we have to take away all the indriyas which is going outwards to all the vishyavastus inside and place it on the lord that is the idea like a tortoise so this is first we have to keep our hand like this the right hand so, the flower which we are going to use for the meditation, we have to keep it in between the two fingers like this. 
the flower suppose let us think that i don't have any flowers here suppose we will think this is the flower this box okay how to place it between the two fingers like this imagining this flower don't take this box or something like that is imagining this as the flower which you are using for meditation then we keep it in the finger between the fingers the flowers like this then the other hand the palm is kept like this and we keep it on that kept keeping at the level of the chest so the forefinger will touch the thumb of the lower hands the thumb is going on the other side it is shown there clearly then this little finger on the edge of the forefinger below then the three fingers here are covering like this so this is kurma mudra so all the three different from angles we have seen the kurma mudra there the mudra is shown there you can easily get the idea so that's why we have done it in this way at different angles position 1 position 2 position 3 different angles also we have shown like this okay now keeping that flower we have to do the meditation close your eyes and tell the mantra which i told with the meaning of what is that hridaya kamala mathye rajitam nirvikalpam sada sada kila bhedatitam ek swarupam prakriti vikriti shunyam nityam ananda murtim vimala paramahamsam ramakrishnam bhajamah nirupamam ati sukshmam nishprapancham dirihim gagana sadrusham isham sarvabhutaadi vasam त्रिगुण रहित सच्चित ब्रह्मरूपम वरेण्यम विमल परमहंसम रामकृष्णम भजामह वितरितु अवतीर्ण ज्ञान भक्ति प्रशाति प्रणयगित जीव दुखा असहिष्णु धृत सहज सामधि चिन्मय कोमलांगम विमल परमहंसम रामकृष्णम भजामह देन दर इज द रामकृष्ण गायत्री डिफरेंट डीटी सेव डिफरेंट गायत्री मंत्रास लाइक दुर्गा वी हेव द different gayatri mantra for durga for ganesha we have different gayatri mantra then lakshmi we have different gayatri mantra om mahadevi cha vidmahe vishnu patni cha dhimahi tanno lakshmi prachodayat like that we have different gayatri mantras for ganesha ekadantaay vidmahe vakratundaay dhimahi tanno danti prachodayat so like that for ramakrishna The Gayatri Mantra is given there at the end of the Dhyana Mantra. Om Rama Krishna Ya Vidmahe Gada Dhara Ya Dhimahe Tanno Devaha Prachodayat. We have taught you how to pronounce it in the last Dhyana. This thing. Now, though I have mentioned about the meaning of that Dhyana Mantra, I will. also tell that dhyana mantra meaning again so that it will be easy for you to proceed forward understand it so let us go break it little by little and understand the dhyana mantra om hrudaya kamala madhye rajitam nirvikalpam sada sada kila bheda atitam ek swarupam प्रकृति विकृति शून्य नित्यम आनंद मूर्ति गमन परमहंसम रामकृष्ण भजा हृदय कमल मध्ये राजित मीनिंग इज शाइनिंग इन साइड द हार्ट और मिडल ऑफ द हार्ट निर्विकल्पम निर्विकल्पम इज अनचेंजिंग विदाउट एनी चेंजिंग विकल्प सो जनरली इन द निर्विकल्प समाधि there is no difference between subject and object everything becomes one subject only that is nirvikalpa samadhi here nirvikalpa means unchanging sadas sat asat akhila bheda atitam so that becomes sadas sat akhila bheda atitam that's why if i break it into single words then the meaning also can be understood easily sat asat akhila bheda atitam beyond all distinctions of real and unreal good and evil so beyond all those things that's the meaning sada sada kila bhedatitam ekasurupam then 
Ekaswarupa means the one essence. He is the one essence. Prakriti Vikriti Shunyam. Bereft of the idea of the cause and product. You know, Prakriti Vikriti is from Prakriti. From the Lord comes this Mahat. Then it converts, it gets converted into Prakriti. It is in the form of idea. Then this creation, this world, everything, that particular creation in the form what we see here is created. So that is Vikriti. So Prakriti Vikriti Shunyam. Shunyam is zero without it. So bereft of the idea of cause and effect, cause and, cause and product. The Nityam, eternal. So beyond this Maya, Prakriti Vikriti, then who is eternal means the Atma Swarupa, Parabrahma Swarupa. He is the eternal cause, the Lord. Ananda Murtim. So that's why the Lord is called Satchit Ananda. He is the Ananda Swarupa, the embodiment of bliss. Vimala Paramaham Sam. Vimala. Mala means dirt or impurity. Vimala means without any impurity. Blemishless. Paramaham Sam. The great swan. Swan itself, the ordinary swan can separate the if you mix water and milk, it takes only the milk and uh, separates the water and throws it away. Likewise, a person who can take only the good things of this world and gives up the bad things is called Hamsa. So, Parama Hamsa is one who has realized the essence, taken only the real, that is Parabrahma Swarupa. He has become one with that. He has given up the worldliness completely even without a trace he is Paramahamsa completely he has identified himself with Paramatman or Parama, Param, Parabrahma so that one that with all that higher qualities he is Paramahamsa so the Lord is called Paramahamsa here Vimala blemishless Paramahamsam that is whom Ramakrishna Bhajamaha I am going to worship or meditate the spotless Swan Supreme, Sri Ramakrishna, we adore, we worship, we respect. Then the next verse is Nirupamam, Atisukshmam, Nishprapancham, Niriham, Gagana Sadrusham, Isham, Sarva Bhuta Adivasam, Triguna Rahita Sachit, Brahmarupam Varenyam, Vimala Paramahamsam, Ramakrishnam, Bhajamaha. Nirupamam, Upamam is comparison, metaphor. So you compare with so many things. So, but he is comparisonless. You cannot compare him to anything because he is the highest. No comparison at all. He cannot be compared. That is the higher aspect of his. So, nirupamam, nirupamam, beyond comparison, incomparable, ati sukshmam, extremely subtle. Ati Sukshmam. These are all the epithets of Sri Ramakrishna. This is the meditation on Sri Ramakrishna. Nishprapancham. Beyond the variegated universe. Niriham. Without desire. Iha is desire. Without desire. Gagana Sadrusham. Comparable to the extensive or infinite space. Gagana Sadrusham. Isham. Isham is Lord, Supreme Lord. The highest Lord is Isham, Supreme Lord. Sarva, He is everywhere, He is formless, all that thing are there. But at the same time, Sarva Bhuta Adivasam, He also dwells, dwelling in all the living beings. He is the Antaryam, in Indwella. Triguna Rahita Sachit Brahmarupam Varenyam Brahman. Absolute existence, the highest is called Brahman. Brahmarupam, consciousness without the three gunas is three guna. Rahita is consciousness without the three gunas. The three gunas are very low. So it is Mayatmika, Trigunatmika is Maya. So it is beyond that, that is Parabrahma. So Brahman, absolute existence, consciousness without the three gunas, the Maya, absolute existence. So that is represented here by the words Triguna Rahita Satchit Brahma Rupam Varenyam Varenyam is one who is adored or respected we get it in Gayatri Mantra also Bhurbhuvasuvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam 
the one who is to be adored respected venerated venerable so here yeah, excellent varenyam excellent vimala paramaham sam ramakrishnam bhajamaha the spotless the blemishless swan supreme shri ramakrishna we adore then the last paragraph or the there are so many other things we here in the puja we use only these three stanzas vitaritum avatirnam gnana bhakti prashanti hi pranay galita chittam jeeva dukkha sahishnam dhruta sahaja samadhim chinmayam komalangam vimala paramaham sam ramakrishnam bhajamaha vitaritum avatirnam he has come down avatarana he has come down descended down from that word avatarana only we get the word avatara avatara is not different dresses avatara means coming down the lord from his higher aspect he comes down takes the human form to our level that is avatarana so vitaritum why did he come down to this world vitaritum to distribute to distribute what vitaritum avatirnam he has come down amongst the men to spread the distribute what gnana knowledge of the highest bhakti devotion to god prashanti hi knowledge devotion and peace the highest peace prashanti prakarshena rupena shanti hi eternal peace pranaya galita chittam his heart or mind is melting with compassion and kindness and love that is pranaya galita chittam jeeva dukha asahishnam that's why he is unable to bear the suffering of all the souls then dhruta sahaja samadhim he stays spontaneously in samadhi for him samadhi is so natural so the mind rushes towards that higher plane but with great difficulty he pulls that mind down to the plane of this universe or earth to stay with us to help us so his natural state is samadhi to merge in the higher consciousness as parabrahman it's so pure that simply it rushes just like our mind the natural state is to go run behind the objects of senses for enjoyments but the natural state of shri ramakrishna is it rushes to samadhi samadhi is merge in brahman so dhruta sahaja samadhim he stays spontaneously in samadhi chinmayam komalangam consciousness chinmaya chin means chit it comes from the word chit that is consciousness maya means complete everywhere so embodied consciousness consciousness embodied is a and komala anga komala means soft anga means body so consciousness embodied in a soft tender body so chinmayam komalangam means consciousness embodied in a soft tender body satvik body vimala paramaham sam ramakrishnam bhajamaha the blemishless spotless swan supreme shri ramakrishna we adore so we did that all that manasa puja also so now we gave the meaning of that we will go to the next step in that dhyana itself now after the meditation with that flower earlier in the manasa puja we took that flower and placed it on our head the sasrara and we did the manasa puja there but now it's not manasa puja it is actual worship the worshiping of the deity now with all the external items dravya dravya puja with all the articles of worship so this is not internal or manasa puja it is external worship we'll start now so what is before the external worship what are we to do at the end of the dhyana the flower is not to be placed on the head and meditated now but the flower after this meditation we have to take it having kept the flower used in the meditation on the photo where you which you are worshiping or image of ramakrishna or the yantra that is it may be that paneshwar shiva or the saligrama whatever you have even the flower itself if you don't have any of these yantras you can just keep the flower itself on the you can do all this worship imagining that the lord has come there to the flower itself if you don't have all these things okay 
So imagine the divine manifestation of the deity because we are worshipping Lord Ramakrishna here. Now we are showing the example. So it is Ramakrishna. Otherwise the consciousness of the Lord will take the form of whatever deity you are worshipping. If it is Ganesha, Ganesha, if it is Shiva, Shiva or Rama or Krishna or uh, Durga or Kali or Saraswati or Lakshmi, whichever you are worshipping. So or Hanuman, whatever. So here now you have to imagine the divine manifested manifestation of the deity Lord Sri Ramakrishna in an effulgent, bright, living form is living there. Then you have to show the Parami Karana Mudra. Last time we explained in the Visheshargi, end of Visheshargi also we did that Parami Karana Mudra. We have explained about Parami Karana Mudra in the last this thing. So but for the purpose of understanding again so that you get more clarity I will explain that Parami Karana Mudra and also its significance again. So it is shown there having kept the flower after that then show Parami Karana Mudra. The Mudra is also shown there you can see the Mudra how the hands both the hands are stretched all the other fingers are stretched. only the two thumbs are locked interlocked that is Parami Karana Mudra it is shown there it is very easy nothing no difficulty but even then I am showing so it is stretched the two thumbs are to be locked That's so this is why the thumbs are locked and what is this Parami Karana Mudra then you have to show on the deity like that where you have to do the worship you have to do it ok now we will explain what is the significance of this Parami Karana Mudra by that you will also know the other aspect of it What is this Parami Karana Mudra? Join the two thumbs and keeping the other fingers stretched. Stretch them outwards. So join the two thumbs. This mudra is intended. What is the significance? What is it intending? The mudra is intending for making the object whole. It is used just before the beginning of the actual worship. You also used it at the end of the Visheshargya. Now we are using just before the beginning of the actual external worship also. So this mudra is intending for making its object whole. We shall explain how. It is used just before the beginning of the actual worship. Before the worship. So what did we do earlier? Karanyasa and Anganyasa. What is the significance of Karanyasa and Anganyasa called? It is called Samali Karana is performed. What is Samali Karana? During Samali Karana, one splits, splits, breaks the consciousness up as it were. Nobody can break it, but it here for our Vyavahara, for our business here, for the sake of worship, we are breaking it up as if it is broken. One splits up as it were the indivisible principle, indivisible principle, and places it, it places, place that consciousness, indivisible consciousness, splitting it in different parts of one's body to feel the presence of consciousness, your own body and hands. Then one takes that principle, the Supreme Lord or consciousness from one's own heart and place it in the form of oneself, in front of oneself for purpose of worship. Now, earlier in the Bhuta Shuddhi, we invoked, we bought and Jeevan Nyasa also, we made the consciousness to take this thing, form of Ramakrishna with this Lelihana Mudra, we kept it at the heart, then the new body was created in the Bhuta Shuddhi, removing all the Papa Purusha, burning all the things, so you created a new body, 
then brought back all that Kundalini separated from the Sahasrara, brought it back to the Muladhara. Then in that new body, you invoked now the old person, whoever the worshipper is gone, is not there. Mm. So we are invoking Ramakrishna, we have become a Ramakrishna himself through that process, Jivanyas. What did we do there? We bought the Jiva, we bought that took the form of the, this thing. The consciousness was brought to take the form of Ramakrishna. Um, Rim, Krom, Yam, Ram, Lam, Vam, Sham, Sham, Sam, Haum, Ham, Saha, Shri Ramakrishna, Devata, Yaha, Prana, Yaha, Prana, Am, Rim, Krom, Yam, Ram, Lam, Vam, Sham, Sham, Sam, Haum, Ham, Saha, Shri Ramakrishna, Devata, Yaha, Jeeva, Yastitaha, Am, Rim, Krom, Yam, Ram, Lam, Vam, Sham, Sham, Sam, Haum, Ham, Saha, Shri Ramakrishna, Devata, Yaha, Sarvendriyani, Am, Rim, Krom, Yam, Ram, Lam, Vam, Sham, Sham, Sam, Haum, Ham, Saha, Shri Ramakrishna, Devata, Yaha, Vang, Manas, Chakshut, Vakshotra, Krana, Prana, Yaha, Gatya, Sukam, Charam, Tishtam, Tuswaha. So all the different parts, limbs, everything we invoked as if this was an image just like when we consecrate the image outside in the temple so we consecrated this newly formed body as the image in which we invoked, we invited Ramakrishna and we ourselves now became the old self is destroyed we ourselves became Ramakrishna now in this process we are bringing out Ramakrishna from our heart Then we are placing it on the yantra. He takes now he comes and sits in front of us. Then he accepts his now living form is there. Ramakrishna is brought out from ourselves. From our own heart we are bringing. Then placing him in front of us in that place on the yantra. Then his living presence we are going to worship. He is there. So that is the aspect that we are worshipping him. Just like a living person. That is the idea here. So beautiful isn't it? So, the, then one takes that principle, the Supreme Lord from one's own heart, now we are taking the form of Sri Ramakrishna, places, in, places it in front of oneself for purpose of worship. At that time, this mudra, Paramikurna mudra is shown on the deity whom you have brought out to show with the idea, is shown with the idea that it again made whole, whole of Ramakrishna has come complete the Lord himself whole Ramakrishna is there so that is the idea in showing Paramikrana Mudra this time this Mudra is shown with the idea that it is again made whole that is to remind oneself that it had been whole always Purna Purna Madaha Purna Midam Purnat Purna Mudachyate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purna Meva Avashishyate so it the whole was always there Purna indivisible the Lord is always Purna but now we have given him a form so at that time this mudra paramikarana shown with the idea that it was it is again made whole that is to remind oneself that it had been whole purna and indivisible all the time and the diversity of duality is imagined only for the purpose of worship that's why we are showing paramikarana mudra now so showing paramikarana mudra and other things we have come to know we are taking out how did we take out now that process and everything in that how do we take out that whatever we have told now from our heart what is the process we follow all that thing I am going to tell you in the next session because now we already completed our time this this completed 7 o'clock we will stop our discussion here so we will continue the same thing how the Lord is brought what is the process followed there to bring out the deity Ramakrishna here or any other deity how to bring out what is that process what is the ritual followed what is the significance how is he bought so all that we will see in the next session until then we will be meditating and thinking on this aspect and finding the deeper meaning of this and enjoying this aspect of puja until then namaskar to all of you thank you we will close the session with the mantra Om Priyatam Pundari Kakshaha Sarvayagneshwaro Harihi Tasmin Tushte Jagat Tushtam Predite Preditam Jagat Harihi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Pranamastu